All right, welcome here. Uh, what I want to do is show you how to classify the number negative 7. So the first thing we need to understand is negative 7 is a real number. Um, the next thing we need to understand is how can we classify real numbers? Well, there's two main categories that we're going to classify now. One as rational numbers, and the second one is irrational numbers. I was going to see if I need any more space, but I'll kind of spit in there. So the main important thing about rational numbers is anything that you can rewrite as you know a fraction. So you know here's a rational number, uh, one half. I can write it as a fraction. Irrational numbers are numbers that we cannot really write down the exact value on that sheet of paper. One half is the exact value, but pi we know is the number three point one four one five nine dot 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 goes on and on forever. So we can't actually write down the exact value of pi. We have to represent it with um, this symbol. The other one is square root of 8. When you type in square root of 8 into your calculator, you get an approximation of 2.6457513, something like that. But either way, that's again, that's approximation. We have to represent it as the square root of 8 because the exact value of that, it goes on and on forever, and we can't actually compute the exact value. So we look at this and we say, all right, where is this going to be? Well, it's obviously going to be on the rational side. The next one we want to look at are going to be integers. Now, integers are obviously rational numbers. So I could say 6 divided by 2 is an integer. Uh, but the difference between integers and rational numbers is one thing. When I do 1 divided by 2, that gives me a decimal point 5. And if you think of like a number line, all the um, number line, you're looking at like kind of like whole numbers, like stepping stones, like 1, 2, and 3. So point 5 isn't going to be one of those uh, whole numbers that we're looking for. However, 6 divided by 2 does equal 3. But the special thing about integers, which is going to separate them from the rest of these, is that they can also be negative. Because our next set of numbers are whole numbers, which are just like the other ones, but they include the point zero, as integers would as well. But then we have natural numbers. And those are your numbers that everybody is very most familiar with. It's like the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, natural numbers are whole numbers. But you've got to notice that 0 is not a natural number. Um, so when I look at negative 7, I say, all right, is negative 7, it's obviously on the rational side. It's definitely a rational number. I can rewrite negative 7 as a, um, as a fraction. I can rewrite it as like negative 14 divided by 2. I can write it as negative 7 over 1. Then I look at it, it's definitely an integer. Um, because I can rewrite it as a negative, negative number. However, all whole numbers, no whole numbers are negative, nor are the natural numbers are negative. So therefore, negative 7 is only going to be contained in the set of real numbers, rational numbers, and integers. And that's it.